when we're talking about jazz music, uh, we have a progression that repeats itself quite quite a bit of times actually. So the progression I'm referring to is a two five one. For example, in the key of C major, we have D minor seven, G seven to C major seven. Now the question is, what do we play on this progression? And there is a really really beautiful system called bebop scales and the develop developer of that system is called Barry Harris, an amazing artist, musician and also an educator. He passed a few years ago and I'll add a link so you can check out his work and, and educational work as well. Now I want to talk about the concept of bebop scale and how it can help us uh, improvise and create within jazz but also within other mediums because it kind of looks at music in a certain uh, very beautiful and interesting way that can be helpful. Now, what is the system? That's that's the main thing that I want to talk about. I'm going to show you exactly how it functions and how it works and all the permutation that um, that it has. So let's start from the beginning. It's it's very important to pay attention, and I know it's a lot of um, information, but truly, this is super super helpful. And I wish I knew about it when I started improvising because it would kind of solve a lot of things. It's almost this instant um, recipe to play bebop. Now of course like anything you need to practice it, you need to hear it, you need to feel it, you need to work with it, but check out the the, the guidelines of that language. So first let's look at a 2-5-1. I'm gonna shift keys, I'm gonna do a 2-5-1 in the key of B flat. So that's C minor 7, F7 to B flat major 7. Now when we have a 2-5-1 progression there is basically some chord, the two, which we call a second, uh, a, sorry, a subdominant, sub comes before, and then dominant, which is a, a point of tension, if you will. So tension leads us to the resolution. Music functions in this way of, of sort of like going from point A to point B, and oftentimes there is moments of tension that are being resolved. This is sort of like the motion of music. It can be more tension and more jazzy resolution or, you know, less tension and simpler resolution. Simpler in the sense of just a triad versus maybe uh, more uh, enhanced, if you will, or more extensions and more colors. Now, they're both great, it depends on the style. Go back to the two five one. So we have a two five one. Now the question is, what do we solo and how do we approach it? And a beautiful and interesting thing that Barry Harris is talking about is the idea of basically dropping the two. So when you have this progression, and oftentimes with jazz music or different improvised um, elements, there are a lot of chords. <laughs> a lot of chords are shifting by when you're soloing. And basically he's saying, well, the real motion that is happening is this tension, this F7, that is being resolved to the B flat here. So sort of like the main attraction for us and the main point that we want to think about is this five, this dominant, and then resolution to the B flat. Now, if we look at it in this sort of way, we can actually say like, well, okay, we're dropping the two completely. Oh, and the pick. Dropping the two and a pick. So dropping the two, so ignoring the two when we're soloing. So we're only thinking basically about this F7 when we're improvising. And what it gives us, first of all, is a lot of time. Because if you know you have this this kind of quick transition, two chords per bar sometimes, now you have one chord, which is easier to think about. Basically, when we're improvising using that system, we're saying we have this F7 and this line is basically me playing an F7 scale, an F mixolydian, but adding one chromatic note. So the whole system is adding chromatic notes in specific places. And the question is why and how many uh, we're adding. And it's very systematic and very simple. And the answer is always going to be that we're going to add a chromatic note in order, and that's important, to hit as many chord tones on downbeats chord tones on downbeats. So basically, um, when we're listening to this line, one and two and three and four and one, this, this simple line basically holds the concept of bebop scale and, and the bebop articulation. Again, very simple and very kind of like 
the, 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 the mere skeleton, if you will, but it really holds a lot of information. So what I mean by that is this, one passing note, this is the chromatic that I'm adding, and two, and three, and four, and one. Now I just played on F7 to B flat, and what is happening here, it's on beat one, one, this is F, and E flat, and C, and A. So the note that I was saying, F, E flat, C, and A, happening on the downbeat. And these notes, not by chance, are basically the articulation of F7. Literally the notes within the chord. And with jazz and a lot of improvised um, kind of like languages, if you will, um, the idea to express the changes, to, to articulate the chords, or at least to be sensible and sensitive to what is happening, is very important. Um, in that sense, when we have this F7 here, and we are basically playing this line, um, literally articulating what is happening in a different way. Again, I'll play it uh, slow in a 2 5 1, so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. So this is me playing 2 5 1 in the bass. And by doing that, as simple as it is, I'm actually articulating the chord. And that is important for us, especially when you get more complex and especially when there are more than one center that is happening. We shift between centers and um, as improvisers, we wanna have the ability to do that. All right, so this is sort of like why it works, but now how do we practice it and what is, you know, how do we actually do it? So first of all, I'm going to ask you to just to, to be aware of this sort of position that I'm taking here of F mixolydian, F dominant. So I'm starting from this note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And the seven is flat seven, right? Again, just this is the shape, this is the fingering that I'm gonna use, and you can ascend here to hit this F. Now, it is also important, very helpful for us to understand that F7, F mixolydian, is a part of the B flat major tonality. So when we have this 2 5 1, we know that I'm playing F mixolydian and we hear this F as a center, as a tension point that is, you know, being resolved later on oh, <laughs> with this B flat. But we also are, you know, we are, uh, you know, legally. Um, capable and and it's it's totally fine I'm saying to see you know the connection between F and B flat if you know the fingering for B flat major 7 you will see it and it's helpful both things are the same thing it's sort of like again looking at the white key and saying like oh, okay this is C major and it can also be a minor it depends or it's D um, Dorian for example more of that later but for now what is important for us is to see the F mixolydian and feel it and understand it's a part of the B flat major tonality. Okay, this is step one here. Now I'm going to play the F mixolydian just descending from one to one, no chromatic notes. And now this, the, the first kind of point of this scale is adding one chromatic note between the one and the seven. And sort of the, the rule of this is usually one chromatic or three chromatics zero chromatics or two and you see how it goes we'll do it step by step so i'm going to start here first with z uh, with one chromatic here and this is f7 now if i'm choosing to start a scale from a different degree for example the next one g i'm still playing f mixolydian so that would sound like this so this is zero chromatics starting the scale from the note g one and two and three and four and one and if I'm starting the scale from the two, from G, and you can hear that sound, one and two and three and four and one, I can play zero chromatics and actually get most of the chord tones down. So again, if I'm thinking about F7, I'll play F here as a, as a note. So we have F, one, that's the ninth, there's nothing to do because you start there. So one and chord tone and chord tone and chord tone and resolution. So from the two we have zero chromatics or two chromatics. Why two chromatics? The same exact reason. We're trying to hit those downbeats with chord tones. So if I'm adding only one chromatic I'm going to mess it up but if I'm adding two chromatics I can get one and two and one. 
which is the E flat, which is important. So again, downbeats, uh, we want those chord tones, those one, three, five, seven of the chord. So the second option that we have with Weaver scale is from the G, zero chromatic, scale descending, or two chromatic. So chromatic between the G and the F, and the chromatic between the F and the E flat, which is between the one and the seven. And then I'm just, I can keep descending, or I can do one and two and three and four and one, and end it on beat one. Again, zero chromatics, one, two, three, four, one, or two chromatics, one and two and three and four and one. Now, we're going to continue further, and I know it's a lot of information, but bear with me because this will actually help. It's okay if you don't hold the guitar as well, you can just listen and understand the concept. It's very important, and if you need to watch it again, it's totally fine. It took me also uh, some some time to figure out, understand it, and, and now I'm in the process of actually doing it also on the piano. I'm kind of refining it, and it's really, really cool to, to kind of play it on, on a different instrument as well. So, the next option that we have is starting this whole um, conversation from the three. So, this would be the three, again, think about F, so this would be A. From A, I basically just descend, so I have the option of one chromatic or three chromatic. One chromatic would be the same one that we had before, so between the one and the seven. So it would sound like this. One and two and three and four and one. Or I can do three chromatics. So three chromatics, again, the same, same concept of hitting downbeats, sorry, hitting chord tones on downbeats. The three chromatic would be between the three and the two, the two and the one, and the one and the seven. So it will sound like this. One and two and three and four and one. It's beautiful because we're also hitting this nine on the resolution. One more time. One and two and three and four and one. Now, uh, what you want to keep in mind is that you know, when you're practicing it, you want you do want to be aware as much as possible to the notes and how they relate, right? So knowing the fingerings and being able to play it is important, but I do want you to say and kind of slow it down to yourself, saying like, oh, okay, this is the three, this is A, the three, this is F, so F, G, A is the three, and then I'm descending the mixolydian scale, the, you know, the, the dominant scale, if you will, and three, chromatic note, two chromatic note, one chromatic note, seven, six, and resolution to one. Slowing down one more time from the three, one and two and three and four and one. That's it. That's, that is the, the, the bebop scale from the three. Now I'm going to continue to the next degree and that would be the four. <laughs> so again, F dominant, F7, so I'm just looking at the fourth note, so F, G, A, and then B flat. So from the four, we have the same system of zero chromatic or two. Zero would be just descending the scale. So one and two and three and four and one. This is basically a two, five, one, right? So if I'm hearing that, boom, bing, boom, do, Right, that's that's sort of like the motion that we imagine, or you know, somebody is playing piano, or we have these chords happening in the background, and we can hear one and two and three and four and one. It's definitely great, great to sing it as well. We'll we'll talk about it a little more later. But for now, I want you to understand the concept and start playing it. So from the four, zero chromatics, or the other option is two chromatics. The two chromatics are going to be the same exact place as we had from the two, which is between the G and F between the two and the one and one and seven. So one and two and three and four and one. Again from the four with two chromatics. One and two and three and four and one. Again, I know it's it's a lot of information, but please please take your time and listen to the sounds and, and the clarity when we're improvising and creating, again, whether it's jazz, whether it's blues, whether it's rock, you want to be as aware and as, as kind of, um, you know, 
connected with your feelings and emotions to the sound so you can create whether again later on you use blues language or different ideas they're all related to the center so the more uh, we are clear about the fretboard and the more we're clear about how things lay down on the guitar the easier it is to transcribe to understand and to play with people which is I guess the the idea for me to um, you know just to express music so now after we did the one two three and four we're going to go to the five from the five you know it from the five we have one chromatic or three chromatic so like you see always one or three so from the five one chromatic would be one and two and three and four and one so I'm just adding the chromatic between the one and seven again one and two and three and four and one that's it and I can also do three chromatics, which would be the same one that we had before. So it would be between the three and the two, the two and the one, and the one and the seven. These are the only places that we have chromaticism. One and seven, two and one, three and two. So from the five, three chromatics. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. You can continue descending if you want. Basically, it depends if you do two bar or one bar. Um, sometimes if you do the three chromatics, it's nice to kind of keep descending a little bit. So it's like one and two and three and four and one and two and three or something of that nature or really ending it at F. So, but again, you don't have to. You can decide where you stop and in the, in the phrase. The next one is from the... The six, from the six we have again zero or two. Zero would be one and two and three and four and one. Again, ending on the nine, so that's zero. One and two and three and four and one. Or two. One and two and three and four and. Now, I can, I'm going to play a little more because oftentimes, you know, you, you don't want to and there so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one it's basically if I'm starting from the six from here and I'm deciding to do two chromatics I would probably do two octaves to be quite honest so you sound like this one um, but again depends on the context depend on how much time you have etc etc from the seven one or three so one would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one I do that or three chromatics one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one so it's sort of like almost like a two bar kind of thing if you want to look at it like that or you condense it into one bar and 60 note or eight note. depends again how you see the two five the tempo that you're playing in and the last one here that we have is from the one here. So one, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. It's basically a two bar where I'm just playing one chromatic here. One. So the difference between um, basically playing this line and F7 or F mixolydian is only one note because I'm adding this chromatic note here. Nevertheless, this sounds very stylistically correct. Especially if I do all these like little endings. So um, it's it's interesting how um, helpful this system of, of um, descending, this is the first step for us, the bebop scale can be and um, this is again not music yet this is just understanding the system and being able to descend in time um, one of the ways that i would you know kind of recommend practicing it that and i use to practice is is basically playing it in time so taking you know the metronome or a steady beat or something and saying one and two and three and four and one two three four one and two and three and four and one from the two two one and two from the three one chromatic etc etc so 
I'm basically playing it in time and usually I'll put the metronome uh, in different, I, mean, I just played chord notes right now, but I would put it on two and four as a starting point and later on when you get comfortable, you can do other things. Um, so this is the, the kind of like, you know, first introductory um, kind of like um, conversation about the bebop scale. It's not done yet, right? So um, for us, in order to start making music, there's an important device um, that we add, and this is sort of like the dominance or the chord, to sorry, the chord um, um, arpeggios, ascending and then descending the scale. So it will sound like this. So basically, you know what, I'm going to start from the G minor just uh, for, for ease, because you can have it say the phrase that we start with. So I'm going to play basically one, two, three, four, one. So what is happening here, I'm playing downbeat, there is an eighth note rest, and then on the upbeat I'm playing chromatic note, and then a triplet, one, ta, ta, ki, ta, and then I'm hitting this note, which is a seven. This is G minor seven. I'm basically articulating the triad, the, the, the seven chord, one, three, five, seven. And then from that note, from that top note, I'm descending according to the rules we have just talked about. So one. So again, slowly but surely, one. So this is sort of like the line, one and two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four, one. All right, so this is basically how it lays down if I'm looking at it as two bars. And you can hear it on two and four, one, two, three, four, one. the resolution here in B flat um, and then what you can do is start systematically going um, up the scale so basically we have that idea right just a G minor 7 ascending and descending the scale and of course the minute you're doing it a little bit with more confidence and maybe adding some closure line like for example all of a sudden, this sounds like jazz, right? If I'm playing. So I start with this idea. And then I can end it in a different place, or I can really just descend the whole Bebo phrase. Or. Or anything of that nature, right? Just like, as long as I'm, I'm kind of articulating that bebop idea and, and closing it in the right place, we're good. And this is kind of to show you just how, um, how simple that bebop device can be because it really kind of takes us, um, you know, really takes us by the hand um, throughout those changes in a very clear way. All right, so we have the G minor ascending and then descending and resolution. The same thing we can do with the next chord, which would be a half diminished. So I'm going to play chromatic note, and what do you know, I'm hitting the G. This is the second degree of F7, therefore I can do zero chromatic or two chromatic. So zero chromatic would be that, or I can do two, right? So the same idea we talked about before, this is why it's kind of like, the second part because we need first the ability to say ah okay or and I'm just adding the chord the the seven chord ascending zero two then the next chord would be B flat major I'm ascending chromatically one chromatic one three five seven from the A, which is the seven of B flat major seven, it is the three of F seven, and from the three, like we conversed before, we have the option of doing one chromatic or three chromatics. I know, I know, I know, it's a lot of information. This is why you're gonna slow it down and take your time, but believe me, 
it, it's worth your time because it will save you a lot of time later and will give you, even if you are not intending to be a um, world, uh, you know, more serious bebop player, it will give you a lot of highlights and a lot of information about the neck and the board and how to improvise. So again, if you're serious about music and guitar and interested in, in chromatic language, uh, this is a really, really cool introductory device, uh, the whole bebop scale um, shenanigans. So. From the B flat, here, one chromatic, or three, so. And I can continue descending. And kind of like end it somewhere else, that's not as important for me, as long as I have. I can end it on the nine, or I can keep going if I want a little more. All fine and good options. Next one. So you had B flat, now we have C minor. So C minor, C minor seven. Again, chromatic to the one, flat three, five, seven. The seven, what you know, in relationship to F is the four, so zero or two chromatic. So, or. All these little things, just arpeggios and, and a little bit of jazz vocabulary, this will come as you listen to the music, as you transcribe and all this stuff. But it's really, again, helpful to see how the, the chords and, and lines relate to each other. Okay, next one is D minor seven. So this is the five, so chromatic. And then from the five, I'm descending. And I can decide that I'm descending to the F or ending a little earlier, one. So one ta ta ke ta wa ta 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 ta. So I can end on the nine there, or I can do also the three chromatic. So next one is the six. So now we'll have an E flat major seven descending. Beautiful, beautiful sound. And from the six, I can do zero or two. So. From the seven, basically playing an F7 arpeggio. From the seven descending, I can do one or three, so one chromatic or three chromatics. Or and the last one here is the F7. Uh, D saying so I'm going to play uh, a G minor 7 arpeggio and from the F D saying so one I can keep descending to here or I can stop before cool so again these two elements um, the descending of the scale understanding the mixolydian framework, seeing the chromatic notes between the one and seven, the two and the one and the three and the two. These are the three chromatic options that we have. Seeing those on the board is a great start. And then once we get comfortable a little bit, I added the ascending of a triad and then descending the scale from that. And of course, it doesn't have to be only in this position. I would definitely start here to get comfortable and later on move around the board. And of course, like later on take different songs. And of course, of course, of course, later on, it doesn't need to be that strict in the sense of you don't have to only descend until that point. You can also decide that you're starting with this idea and then changing, for example, so I'm ascending the, I basically ascending the beginning with a B flat major seven, descending from the three according to the rules. So, and then here I can decide that I'm shifting into the minor scale. So it will sound again like this. Again, just as one example, there are many, many options, many keys, uh, sorry, many uh, colors, many um, scales and many sounds that you can withdraw from. But I think, um, 
as an improviser, as somebody that is excited about guitar and sound, I think it's really cool to start understanding the idea of 2-5 and start understanding how this motion is, is um, you know, how we can actually articulate and see the 1-3-5, one, 1-3-5-7 one, and kind of like free up some processing power by eliminating the 2 and looking at the 5 at the dominant. Um, there is another um, sort of like contradictory point of view. Um, Pat Martino was known for um, actually saying like, I don't think about the five, but I'm thinking about the two, which is also a beautiful thing. Again, many, many options and you can of course decide whatever you want, but I think um, at least understanding the system and being able to articulate it in this sort of way is a really good tool to explore improvisation. Thank you so much for uh, listening and hanging in hanging in. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I believe a PDF would definitely help with this video. Um, in any case, thank you so much for being here on the channel and supporting. It means a lot. Um, I hope um, you're having fun and that uh, you're feeling that, you know, your your guitar playing and progression is, is uh, you know, a little bit a little progressing and I'm, I'm, I hope I'm helping out just a little bit. Thanks again and I'll see you very soon. Peace out.